Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for June 24th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. You might ask, what is CircuitPython? It's a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. So if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join that server anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and on the CircuitPython voice channel. Typically, this meeting happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes document, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the at sign CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There's a notes document, which is currently a Google Doc, that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post the link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. And we held this meeting in five parts. I'll explain each part as we get to them. So with that, uh, we'll start with the first thing, which is community news, which is uh, items of interest um, that comes from our weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. That newsletter goes out on email, via email on Monday mornings. You can subscribe by going to adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. Thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python and hardware projects to share or find content you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to the newsletter. You can open a PR on GitHub um, or email cpnews at adafruit.com or tag us on X or Mastodon. Okay, so I'll start with this. Take a time step. And here are some items from this week's, this morning's newsletter. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to note that uh, code.circuitpython.org <clears throat> uh, has been updated. It's a browser-based CircuitPython editor and serial terminal. Uh, so you can just go in your browser to code.circuitpython.org. It should be a Chromium-based browser like Chrome or Microsoft Edge or Opera. Opera doesn't work on all platforms for this editor, but uh, the other two do. So you won't need to install anything. Uh, so in the past, uh, you can, you, you've been able to use code.circuitpython.org to connect to the CircuitPy drive on boards that provide a USB um, drive, or you can use it to connect over uh, the Wi-Fi workflow. But uh, Melissa has recently added um, the capability of connecting to boards that don't uh, provide a CircuitPy drive, like, say, the Espressif ESP32, plain ESP32, or the C3, or the C6. And they now can read and write files um, via the REPL. You, that's done invisibly. So kind of the way Thani works. Um, and so you can use this to set up a board for Wi-Fi workflow really easily. Or you can just use it to edit. Uh, a C3, say a C3 or C6 or plain ESP32 board. Um, that's really nice. You can also upload and download image and sound files for your code, which was previously not an option except with web workflow. So uh, check the links, but basically just type code.circuitpython.org into your Chromium-based browser and get to try it out. All right. Um, next up, uh, how Raspberry Pi built a silicon design team. So for nearly 10 years now, Raspberry Pi has been building um, and designing integrated circuits uh, in Cambridge, England. 
to design and produce custom silicon chips for its products. Uh, examples are the RP2040 microcontroller board and the RP1 I.O. controller, which is on the Raspberry 5 boards. Uh, these chips contain smaller blocks, often referred to as intellectual property, which are either designed by Raspberry Pi or brought in from elsewhere and integrated into Raspberry Pi's chips. And if you want to read about more, more about this, there is a link in the notes document. And then uh, finally, uh, let's talk about uh, an item called the best Python cheat sheet. Uh, there's a link to a multi-page, but not too many pages, cheat sheet, which sort of summarizes all kinds of features and basic functionality in um, Python, that is really C Python, based on C Python. And it's kept up to date. And uh, I find these kinds of things really helpful. I had a really great, like, 24-page uh, Python 2 cheat sheet that I used uh, many years ago, which I found invaluable to look up things quickly in. And I'm sure this is, I looked at this, it seems quite similar. So uh, I'll, finally, I'll just remind you that all these items came from the Python and Microcontrollers newsletter. Please contribute stuff. We always appreciate items. Um, there are links about how to contribute either by pull request or by uh, emailing cpnews at adafruit.com or tagging a post with hashtag CircuitPython on various um, social media. And with that, we'll move on to the next um, section of the meeting called the State of CircuitPython, the Libraries, and Blinka. Uh, this section is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our individual status updates. We'll talk about the project overall, then separately discuss the core libraries and Blinka. So overall, in the past week, we had 30 pull requests merged. There were 22 authors. Um, some names that I uh, have started recognizing only re recently are Apple Cuckoo, uh, M. Montal, uh, John Nodge, um, occasional contributor, uh, maybe two BND with Y5, or maybe they've been here before, I'm not sure, Carl F.L., uh, Lewinsky, Hi Gibbons, and uh, if I've missed anybody who's new, sorry, uh, but we appreciate your efforts. There were five reviewers of those 30 pull requests. And there were 20 issues closed by eight people and 14 opened by 11 people. And now uh, we'll move on to discussing the CircuitPython core. And Scott, if you're available, go ahead and read that. Yeah, happy to. Thanks, Dan. OK, so the numbers, uh, this is for the C core of, of CircuitPython. It's what runs on the devices, is the embedded firmware. Uh, we have uh, 14 pull requests merged from 15 different authors. Um, this can happen if commits are authored by multiple people. I think that happens with WebLate, for example, which is our translation stuff. Um, so I just wanted to thank um, Apple Koku, Matthew Jeffson, Carl FL, Xbox20, Lewinsky, uh, Kyle Moore, uh, John, uh, Tim Chinowski, occasional contributor are all uh, infrequent contributors, according to my brain. Um, so thanks to them, we had 15 authors, which is awesome. We had two reviewers, myself and Dan. Um, as always, we're looking for folks to do reviews. Um, I would say most weeks we do have other folks besides the Adafruit Funded folks, uh, which is great. Um, so we appreciate that. Uh, pull request-wise, we had 25 open pull requests, so we're right at our uh, one-page goal. Um, and hopefully we'll get through a few more of those um, to get further under it. Um, we have... Uh, for issues, we had 10 closed issues by 3 people and 7 open by 5 people, so good participation. And we're net down 3, which is great for 700, or 693 total open issues. Um, we used active milestones to prioritize Adafruit-funded work. Um, and we have 10 open issues on 9.1, so that's quite a lot, but that's because we've had a lot of feature work come in uh, from me and introduce a bunch of issues. So. Uh, that is our main goal right now in terms of uh, priority for Adafruit funded uh, work. Um, we had two open issues for 10.0. That's like the longer term um, major like breaking changes stuff that we want to do, just as a reminder. Um, and we have no issues not assigned to milestones, so we're keeping up on triage. 
And that's the highlights for the core. Okay, thank you, Scott. Okay, uh, next up is the library section and Foamy Guy. Could you read that? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, this section covers all of the CircuitPython libraries, uh, which can all be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. These tend to be either driver libraries that help you uh, interface with a particular piece of hardware, or helper libraries that let you work on your project at a bit of a higher level without worrying about as many of the uh, complex details. Across all those libraries this week, we had six pull requests merged by four authors. Uh, the name here that stuck out to me as newer or less frequent was Hell Gibbons. Uh, so thanks to them, as well as some of the other folks who have more recognizable names. Um, we had three reviewers this week. Uh, so thanks to Liz, Dan, and myself uh, for reviews on libraries this week. The Of the pull requests that were merged, the oldest one was 66 days. And the newest one was one day. Uh, that leaves us after the week with 52 open pull requests. The oldest one is a draft at 676 days. The newest one is one day. And over the last seven days, we had five uh, issues closed by four different people and five new issues opened up by five people. And that leaves us with 858 open issues. Uh, and of those, there are 103 of them that are marked as good first issue, uh, which you are able to find over at circuitpython.org slash contributing if you are interested in getting involved in CircuitPython, particularly in contributing to the development of the project. Uh, if you do load up that page, circuitpython.org slash contributing, what you'll find is a list of open PRs uh, for all these libraries, as well as uh, open issues on the libraries. Um, you can take a look through the list of PRs. If there's one that is either interesting to you or that you've got the hardware for, you can go ahead and click through to GitHub, uh, give it a try. Let us know in a comment on GitHub uh, that you tried it out or looked it over uh, and how it went. And uh, if you get comfortable with that, we can get you leveled up to leave official reviews as well, if that's something that uh, interests you. Um, if you want to get uh, your hands dirty with some actual coding, you can click on over at that contributing page to the issues section, uh, where you'll find a list of all the open issues on the CircuitPython libraries. Um, and again, if you want to look through that list and find something that is either uh, of particular interest to you or something that you've got the hardware you think you can work on, um, and then you can click through to GitHub and check out the issue, see what it, uh, see what it's all about, and then go ahead and actually submit your own PR uh, to try and solve that issue. Um, if you are new to the process and you don't have experience with Git and GitHub, we have a learn guide that can help you through that. We also have folks who are around throughout the week on Discord who are more than happy to help you uh, get involved in development or reviewing. So uh, don't let any of those things be a barrier. Come say hi, come join us, come, uh, come uh, look for uh, some interesting stuff to work on. Um, in terms of the library uh, PyPI weekly download stats, we have uh, 138,696 downloads this week across the 328 libraries. Um, the top 10 list is here in the notes doc, and the uh, list of updated libraries for the last seven days include the DS248X uh, logging and the ST7789. And that's what we have for libraries this week. Thanks. All right, thank you, Foamy Guy. Okay, um, next up is the, the Blinka section. Melissa isn't here this week, so I'll read her section. Take a timestamp. Um, Blinka is our compatibility layer for CircuitPython on single board computers like uh, the Raspberry Pi models. So in the past week, we had 10 pull requests merged by three authors. There were two reviewers. There are now six open pull requests that have to do with Blinka. There were five issues closed by two people and two opened by two people. And there are now an even hundred open issues. Um, there were uh, 17,280 PyPy downloads in the last week and 18,364 PyWheels downloads in the last month. And we are now supporting, Blinka is now supporting 133 boards which is uh, fantastic. Okay, so uh, next up is Hug Reports. Uh, what is Hug Reports? It's a chance to highlight folks in the Zurich Python community and beyond for doing awesome things. So each of us contributes to Hug Reports. I'll start and then we'll go down the list alphabetically. 
from the notes document to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. All right, so first I'll take a timestamp for myself. Uh, thanks to the 910 beta testers, we have more bugs uh, on the list, but that's fine. We want to fix bugs. So thank you for testing things. Um, thanks to Carl FL, Bill ADAT, and Bablock B for testing uh, the maximum usable Wi Fi power on various. Um, Wi-Fi boards, uh, especially expressive boards. It turns out that for certain boards which have uh, very small antennas and kind of limited antenna space or something, it appears that setting the power to the maximum, which is the default, makes it work poorly. And it's actually better to back off the power a little bit uh, by 3 dB, 6 dB, or even more. Uh, just to make it work better. So uh, several boards now have custom uh, max power and they work better because of it. So thanks, folks. Uh, thanks to Scott for doing deep sleep on all these expressive chips now that it, uh, it's available. Um, please test, folks, if you'd like. Um, and thanks to Jeff for adding stream protocol to SSL sockets, which is uh, an important step toward uh, making things more uniform. Appreciate that. OK, next up is DJ Devon 3. I'll read theirs because they're not here. Um, thanks to Justin and everyone who worked on Connection Manager. Writing API examples from existing boilerplate examples is a breeze now. Thanks to Foamy Guy for all the work on the examples directory in the bundle. Started working on a new project and was up and running in seconds without having to search online for an example in the GitHub repo. Another hug for the quick review of a recent PR. Um, thanks to Tanut and Foamy Guy for all their hard work on BLE related projects lately and a group hug. And next up is Foamy Guy. All right. I have a hard report this week. Thanks to Jeff for figuring out an issue and sharing the root cause that was uh, something to do with import lib.resources um, and an issue that popped up with the uh, device specific uh, board stubs. Um, uh, thanks to Scott for help last week and some pointers into the documentation for the BLE uh, file transfer uh, workflow and then uh, group hug for everybody. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and next up is Jeff. Hello. I've just got one for today. I want to thank Liz for uh, collaborating on a pull request in the learning system GitHub repo. It's not a CircuitPython thing. Uh, it turns out that the Arduino actions weren't running correctly for quite a while, and a number of little problems crept in. And she joined me and has done like the, the last 80% of the work to get that back to green. And I really appreciate your work on that, Liz. So that's what I got. OK, thank you. And uh, next up is Justin. I'll read theirs because they're text only. Um, Timestamp. Uh, Thanks to Tyeth for answering all my Adafruit I.O. questions. And thanks to uh, Dan, me, for working all through my PR, through all my PRs. Hey, you're welcome. And next up is Scott. Hello. OK, so hug reports for me. Um, first, Mild Mojo um, in the general tech chat uh, gave some really good feedback to somebody who is not being super inclusive with a greeting. Um, so I. I really appreciate them being very patient for a while with them while they kind of dug in their heels. And now we have, uh, I have some private conversations with those folks going. Uh, but thanks to Mild Mojo for being really, really awesome and, and uh, supporting our community. And then also hug to Maker Melissa for all of the code.circuitpython.org updates. Um, you do awesome work, so keep it up. All right, thanks, Scott. And yes, thanks very much to Melissa for doing that code.circuitpython.org. Uh, non USB drive boards, which I was really, I'm really looking forward to using, and I've already used. All right. Uh, next up is status updates. Um, so that's our time to tell folks we're up to individually. As before, I'll start and then we'll go through the list. Uh, take some time to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be planning to do uh, before the next meeting. Um, if a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can always move it to in the weeds. 
Okay, so I'll take a timestamp for myself. Um, so I've been really spending the last week uh, debugging Espressif BLE. I have three different um, devices I'm testing, and they all fail in interestingly different ways. And I'm making progress on that. I've got uh, Discovery working better, and some other things working better, and everything uh, is looking good uh, to uh, continue to fix things. And I've also done a lot of reviews. There's a lot of stuff going on that uh, needs reviewing, and I appreciate all the contributions. We all appreciate all the contributions. OK, uh, next up is um, DJ Devin 3, and I'll read theirs because they're not here. I'll, if I can type the timestamp correctly. OK. Uh, submitted an Adafruit Request API exam for the Ratio Irrigation Controller. The Ratio 3 is one of the most popular residential irrigation controllers in the market today. The Ratio API documentation is unfortunately anemic. The amount of data pulled doesn't take much RAM, so it would probably work with something like an M0 with an airlift. You can retrieve data with gets and can push changes like turning on the sprinklers with post. Your API also has MQTT for subscription-based webhook notifications, which I have yet to play with. I'm working on integrating a touchscreen into the Ratio irrigation controller. To my knowledge, hacking a touchscreen into the Ratio has never been done before. I've been spending more time in the garden and redesigning my irrigation system. Digging in the dirt and getting back into nature is a wonderful way to take a mental vacation from computers and coding. Okay, thanks, DJ Devin. And next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thank you. Uh... I have been working on the BLE workflow integration. Um, last week, I got the lister uh, functionality working and then started on read file um, and had a bit of trouble figuring out how the chunking works on larger files. Uh, for a while, I had it to where um, small files that were smaller than a certain size would work fine. Um, but if you ask for larger files, then uh, I was not, not having much luck for a while. But I did eventually uh, get it figured out how those chunks work and to iterate through them and stuff. So um, now read file and lister are both uh, working correctly. The, the next thing I am uh, working on, um, which I started in on this morning, is actually bringing this into a BLE backend class so that it can be used inside of Circup uh, in WW Shell. And then uh, once that groundwork is laid in there, uh, I'll get back to implementing the rest of the functions. I wanted to get two of them in and then start that integration and see um, what shakes out before I finish out the rest of them. Um, another thing I worked on over the weekend was uh, diving in a bit uh, more to Docker, uh, specifically using it uh, to test different Python environments, uh, which is not something I had set up before, but it was um, really convenient for that. Uh, so. Um, I specifically, I was able to get a Python 3.9 environment and a Python 3.10 environment and test the difference between them in the board specific stubs um, command specifically uh, and narrowed that down and um, figured out a fix for it. But uh, once the rest of the information about the issue uh, was known, there was a different fix that made a lot more sense. Um, but I do uh, appreciate the, the knowledge I gained and the experience I gained with Docker, uh, nonetheless, because I can definitely see that coming in handy. Um, and then the other thing was uh, testing uh, requests library, the file uploading, uh, when you upload a, when, when you pass in an open file, I should say, as the data argument. Um, and specifically, I was testing that out with an eye towards the difference, uh, if any, or, or a uh, comparison between CPython requests and CircuitPython requests uh, when you upload a file that way. Um, and that is what I have been working on. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Foley Guy. All right. Next up is, is Jeff. Last week was mostly a non-circuit Python week. In addition to the things with the learn repo that I was mentioning during uh, Hug Reports, I also worked on this uh, prototype Flopsy board that Adafruit is working on. And it works with desktop software called Grease Weasel. And I added the ability that if the uh, product description string says GW compat, then Grease Weasel is going to automatically recognize it. And that simplifies usage of the, of the product a little bit. Um, so my goals are to uh, get back to making a basic Zigbee demo work within CircuitPython, which will be either acting as a light or as a light switch. Um, and then I, I 
wrote here non circuit python finishing the learn github actions problems but i'm pretty sure that liz is going to polish those off and i will be able to concentrate on circuit python so i'm excited about that this week all right thank you. Uh, next up is justin yeah i'm continuing some of my work on the network test code that i've been having fun with uh opened up a small handful of prs to get some of the other libraries um, more on par with Wi-Fi radio, so both in the ESP32 SPI and the WizNet 5K. Um, and then I worked with a user on Discord who was trying to use the bird feeder guide with a Pico and WME OV5640 Pi Cowbell um, and kept running into memory issues, um, which started me down the route of the PR that uh, Foamy guy talked about in requests to be able to send a file and then I will be following it up with some other PRs to the Adafruit IO library um, to add some functionality to create webhooks because those will be needed to do that. And then potentially a library to um, wrap a stream for um, base 64 encoding a file. So not all that thing, all that needs to be loaded up into memory at the same time. That's really okay. okay, is that it? Okay, thanks. Okay. And finally, uh, let's have Scott. Hello. Um, <clears throat> I was mostly out that last week, so I'm getting back into things. I'm likely out tomorrow as well, because I do have family in town still. Uh, but I'll be around the rest of the week. And I'm also out next Thursday and Friday for the 4th of July holiday here in the US. Um, so off and on a little bit. I did fix right before. I worked a little bit last week, and I fixed, um, it turns out BLE workflow was turning on BLE uh, always, um, even when uh, there was separate code that was making a decision not to start advertising. So I kind of tied that together. So if, if uh, BLE workflow decides not to turn, uh, to start up, start advertising, it won't actually start BLE IO, which is good too. Um, and that fixes or helps improve memory use without uh, it on the ESPs. Um, I also got the PR end for Deep Sleep on the ESP32 2 series, C series um, is checked in thanks to Dan as well. Um, so those are the two big items. I'm kind of in the middle or in between things. So I'm going to get through my email and uh, pick up some stuff based on that. OK, thanks, Scott. OK. So um, finally, we've got uh, something in the weeds section, which is a place where we do uh, somewhat longer to start discussions um, that can take a few minutes. And I add an item here. Um, so I was going to talk about um, the fact that uh, we have a lot of uh, kind of pretty, pretty specific examples that are specific use cases that are going into Adafruit libraries. And we talked about one, uh, DJ Devon's um, uh, irrigation system, for instance. And I really appreciate these examples. I'm not trying to, uh, we shouldn't have them by any means, but I'm not sure whether putting them in the libraries makes sense. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that uh, the library gets a new version every time there's an addition to the examples, even though there's no um, actual code change to the library. Um, Another is that usually we had intended in the past that library examples be kind of more general case things that people would go to to look for kind of a template for how to do various things. Um, another thing is that libraries are in the Adafruit organization. And in general, libraries in that organization are the responsibility of Adafruit and we're responsible for fixing bugs in them. But if they're kind of specific things that we don't have, um, control over or examples of or anything, then we can't really fix them. And so uh, if they break, we wouldn't necessarily be able to test them and fix them. And finally, finding these examples uh, requires probably losing a search engine, um, which is kind of OK, but um, they tend to be a little bit buried. In the past, we talked a little bit about documentation of these, but I'd like, I think I'd like to talk about more in general where they might go. So if these examples were projects in a learn guide, uh, the code would be in the learn system repo, and you'd see them exposed in a learn guide. 
Uh, they could be in a playground guide, um, or they could be pointers to somewhere from a playground guide. If the code was in line in a playground guide, that's not so great because that's in the source control. Uh, each one could be in its own repo that would be owned by the contributor, and they could be added to the community bundle uh, for smaller things that might be a little tedious because it is kind of a lot of work to create a library repo. Maybe we should think about how to automate that. Um, or we could have um, like one or more um, community repos that are in the CircuitPython organization, which might be uh, which might contain these examples. So they might have like subdirectories for each example, kind of like the Learn uh, System Guide repo, or maybe there could be more than one, like we would have like a network related example repo or something like that. And so people could submit stuff up to there and CI would get run on these things to make sure that, you know, the code makes sense and adheres to certain standards. So th those are kind of my ideas about that. And I'll read uh, what Jeff said. Um, strength of using playground, or maybe Jeff, you want to just talk about it. Yeah, sure. I'll dive in. I was just kind of thinking of what are the strengths and weaknesses of what I think are the two better options, which is uh, the Playground or the CircuitPython organization on GitHub. Uh, so strength of Playground is that there's a clear ownership of that example or project by one user, but then the weakness is only that one user can change that page on, um, on the Adafruit Playground. I don't, as far as I know, there's not a way to allow other people to edit your pages. Um, a strength of doing it within the CircuitPython organization then is that the community can maintain that example or project, but it does require that the community remain involved and similar to spreading Adafruit too thin by putting all of the examples in Adafruit repositories, um, the, the ability to just have, have community members maintain those things would kind of be an open question. And then one of the, the great strengths of Learn as compared to Playground is that you can use Bundlefly or that Bundlefly is automatically there for you to let you click download and get a whole zip with the code.py and the needed libraries. Uh, it would be great if Python embeds on the playground could get that same treatment, but that requires Adafruit to develop the feature. Uh, right now, I think you can't like embed a Python file from a repository at all. I'm not sure I'd have to go check on this. And I think, you know, there are like security concerns or, or concerns about putting text that Adafruit hasn't vetted on the playground. And so one possibility here is uh, putting the, the code within the CircuitPython organization and then those uh, embeds would be able to be fully featured on playground, uh, whereas a you know, random GitHub repository wouldn't. But that's all off the top of my head and I, of course, have no ability to like allocate the time of the team who is working on the Adafruit Playground, so it's just, this would be nice. Uh, this would make it better. And uh, you were kind of at the end, Dan, talking about having a way to create a repository that was an example. And so it could be interesting to look in what, into what would it take to like create a cookie cutter for a CircuitPython project that would do things like create a bundle of code.py and the needed libraries within GitHub Actions. And that could be an, an interesting area that doesn't necessarily require an Adafruit person to do it. It's something that would operate on GitHub using GitHub Actions. So those are my my thoughts and a little bit of a brain dump. Thank you for bearing with me. All right, thanks. Yeah, and if you put, did you put in a note about the, um, uh, like a cookie cutter thing, if you could put something in about that, that'd be great to write that down. Uh, I, I'd like to talk to DJ David about this. He's not here today, so maybe I'll try to engage him later in the week about this and see what he thinks about uh, how and where he might make, want to make his projects, because he's contributing a lot of these, um, where he might, how to might make his projects more more um, available, uh, more visible is what the word I want looking for. And does anybody else have anything that they'd be interested to say about this? Um, I would add uh, just one thing about, I think it would be nice if we retain some kind um, of, um, I guess, centralized place where they can be linked from, or maybe we could just link them from the repos, not have the, the literal example code in the repo, but a pointer out to uh, wherever they end up being stored. Um, something like that, I think, is valuable. I don't know, I guess, 
how many people are discovering stuff the same way I am, but I can I can say personally I discover a lot of stuff or or even for stuff that I'm not necessarily discovering but using again I go um, to those examples and grab that as the starting point for almost everything I do um, and they often come up in my searches in Google and stuff like that if we were to move to something where they were just individual repos owned by um, individual members I I fear that it might be harder um, to find those things so some kind of pointer in the repos or um, maybe some kind of like uh, glossary type thing or, or a table of contents type thing I think it was mentioned where they could be separated into categories uh, and linked out from somewhere um, I would love to see something something like that 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 keeps them uh, as easy to discover as they are in the examples folders so if there were or if there was a separate a single or a small number of other repos where you would go to look for kind of more sophisticated examples with that. Yeah. Would you think of looking there? I'm, see, I'm mostly thinking about the fact that there's a lot of churn in a library. When, whenever we add documentation or pointers to a library, we have to release the library, or we don't have to release it, but, you know, it's, yeah. you, you need to decide. And, and often the library itself is not going, undergoing any changes. Right. So the version numbers are... Are, don't mean a lot necessarily. Like it doesn't reflect a bug fix or anything like that. Right. So uh, that's that's where I was thinking of trying to get it out of there. But I think you're right. I think like having some kind of big list that's very easily searchable and that is place to link from. Like maybe there might even be a page called examples on circuitpython.org or something like that. Or um, um, Jeff has linked here in the chat the awesome. Uh, awesome link, awesome circuit Python. Yeah. And if I recall yeah. right, awesome is a more generalized thing, right? So theoretically, we could fork off and have like an awesome circuit Python examples or some things like that where they were, um, where it is kind of a home to list those things. Something like that sounds like a, a pretty good solution to me as well, for sure. Right. And the awesome circuit Python repo is now under Adafruit, but it could be under circuit Python also. So, uh, so I'll talk to. Um, to DJ Devon, does anybody else have anything they'd like to say? All right, well, so I just put that out there and uh, you can cogitate on it. Um, and we'll see what comes of it, if anything. I mean, the current scheme is not bad, it just, it just makes for certain, it has certain disadvantages from my point of view. Okay, so that um, kind of wraps it up. Uh, for this week, um, next meeting is at our usual time of Monday, uh, 11 a.m. Uh, U.S. Eastern and, uh, sorry, 11, 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern and 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific time. Uh, there's a U.S. holiday, but it's later in the week, so there's no problem. So we'll see you then. Um, Let's see. Thank you to everybody who participated. I'll just remind you that if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, uh, consider purchasing it from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. We're going to release videos of this meeting on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit. The podcast will be on, a, on major podcast services. The meeting will also be linked to from the next Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. You can go to adafruitdaily.subscribe to subscribe. And um, you can also go to adafru.it slash discord to find uh, the meeting next week. And again, if you want to be notified, you can be added to this at sign circuit Python East as well on discord. So thanks everybody. And I'll stop recording now.